What's up guys, Cubologist here again, and today I've got another average of five for you guys, but this one's a little bit special. I'm using a different cube. It's still a GANS, but it is a stickerless GANS 357. Now you'll see that my times kind of vary a lot with this cube. I either do really well or kind of terrible with it. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but let's get into these questions and I'll talk about why I'm using that puzzle at the end. So stick with me. But first, KRIJ Tube says, what do you think's the hardest WCA puzzle slash event? I think it's probably six by six because it is a large cube, not as large as the seven by seven, but you don't have OLL parity or PLL parity on the seven by seven. So I think it's probably the six by six if I had to guess. Then the Northern Cuber asks, which PLL do you recommend to learn first? Well, it depends on your beginner's method. The way I did PLL was I put the headlights in the back and did an A perm in order to get to an edges only case. So I think if you use that, learn the ones that don't have headlights in the back first. That's what I did at least, cause they annoyed me the most. And then Neil the Cuber asks, do you have a twist the web account? Absolutely, it is just Cubologist, no caps, no numbers at the end, just Cubologist. If you see me on there, talk to me, I'd love to hang out with you guys. Then Zuberakazi, sorry, I'm horrible with that name. He asks, Road to Sub 15? Probably not anytime soon, I'm really not close. I used to participate in the Race to Sub 15 on the speed solving forums, but I'm tired of entering in 18s and 19s and just getting destroyed. So whenever I get close, I'll definitely start that up, but don't expect it anytime soon. Then Azar asks, would you put your logos on the cubicle so people can buy it? I actually contacted the cubicle about that, but it seems like there's an issue where that's not that simple for them. So I don't think that's something that's gonna happen anytime soon, but if it does, I'll definitely make a video about it and you guys will be the first to know. Then Grizzly Cuber asks how long I've been cubing. I think I've answered this, but it's been a good year and a half now. Uh, as far as speed goes, I could solve a puzzle before that, but yeah, speed solving, about a year and a half. Then Rock asks, will you be using stickerless cubes in future competitions? In July, stickerless cubes will be legal. Well, this is actually gonna be the last question because I wanna talk to you guys about this. They actually just released a new set of changes to the regulations, and I wanna talk about that because it's actually pretty exciting. There's more changes than just stickerless cubes, but yes, stickerless cubes will in fact be legal starting July 1st. But now I'm gonna go over just some of the highlights, what I thought was interesting about the actual changes to the regulations. I'll link the summary of all the changes down in the description, so go check that out if you're interested. But like I said, stickerless puzzles will be permitted I don't know yet if I'm going to use one or not. I am really fond of my GANS 356 and I cannot stand this GANS 357. So unless I get a stickerless Hua Long or something like that, I think I'll be sticking with the 356. Another part of the regulations that I'm kind of happy with is they have specifically stated that it is the judge's responsibility to reset the timer. So if the judge fails to do that, you actually get another attempt. So this has happened to me a couple times and you end up just getting a few seconds less of inspection because you have to re reset the timer and that's kind of frustrating. Then there's some more stuff on there about clock and FMC and the fact that you need to be serious in your attempts. But just go read the regulations, guys. I think everybody should. But I really appreciate you watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and you'll hear from me really soon. Later, guys.